I am so glad you're here for the third Mechanism Monday. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video, try the problem independently, and then resume the video to check my answers. And make sure you're subscribed so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. The first step in this chemical transformation is one that you may have learned about in organic chemistry, specifically Michael additions. In fact, I have a video covering conjugate additions right here that you can check out. The first step is a 1,4 Michael addition where the nitrogen will attach at the four position, if this is one and this is two and this is three, then we would call this the four position. And this would do a one four Michael addition by the nitrogen nucleophile attacking at the four position. This is going to move over these pi electrons here and then kick up the pi electrons to oxygen. The product of this transformation is going to contain a nitrogen at this position, which is going to be positively charged because it exceeds its valency until we subsequently deprotonate it and it contains three carbons coming off of it because this was propylamine. We also now have a single bond here and a double bond here for our enolate formation. So this forms what is called an enolate anytime you have an alkene with a negatively charged oxygen that's called an enolate. And from here, a second molecule of propylamine can come and deprotonate this hydrogen leaving us with a neutral nitrogen in the following step. So that is a proton transfer is what we would call that. So this is going to leave behind now a neutral nitrogen, which still has the propyl group coming off, our single bond here, and our enolate is still intact. Importantly, in this step, we are generating a positively charged nitrogen containing species or an ammonium ion, because now this exceeds its valency and it is positively charged at this position. From here, what can happen are the lone pairs on oxygen and our enolate can come back down and this will make the pi bond attack this proton to deprotonate it. And this is going to leave us with a neutral species. So we are going to be left with a neutral species at this step where our aldehyde has reformed so now we still have our aldehyde. Now that we've regenerated this aldehyde, the nucleophilic nitrogen atom has regained its lone pair. It can do a nucleophilic attack at this carbonyl carbon. This again is going to kick up the pi electrons back to oxygen. And notice that this is also going to be what generates our four-membered ring because now we have one, two, three, four atoms that make up that ring, and we have done that ring closing formation here. And the product of that transformation now looks like this where we have still our negatively charged oxygen at this position, and now we've made nitrogen positively charged, and it still has the propyl group coming off, and at this position, we still have our ethyl group. Now, to give myself some space, I'm gonna restart from this position. Now, previously, we walked through the mechanism steps that led us to this ring closed formation of our four-membered ring, which we need in our final product. Importantly, at this stage, the nitrogen is positively charged because it is, contains four bonds going to nitrogen, which means we need to do another proton transfer where another propylamine can come in and deprotonate this hydrogen to leave us behind with a neutral nitrogen. And the product of this transformation is now going to be neutral, where nitrogen has regained its lone pair and everything else will remain the same, so there's still a propyl group here and an ethyl group at this position. Now in doing this step here where the propylamine deprotonated this nitrogen hydrogen bond, this regenerated an ammonium ion. So now we have a nitrogen that is positively charged that can be deprotonated by this negatively charged oxygen. So from here, since there are three lone pairs, this can come in and abstract the hydrogen in order to regenerate our propylamine. And at this stage, the product of this transformation is beginning to look much more like our final product, where we have now generated an alcohol at this position. And remember, this nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons on it. At this stage, this lone pair of electrons can come down and be used to kick off the alcohol, generating a new nitrogen to carbon double bond. And the product of this transformation is what's known as an iminium ion, where you have a nitrogen to carbon double bond and it, the nitrogen is positively charged. So this gives us that iminium ion, which is going to make the alpha carbon position, if you consider this to be a carbonyl carbon at this position, this would be the alpha position, making this hydrogen that is at located at this position much more susceptible to deprotonation because we have acidified this alpha carbon hydrogen position, which means that the OH group, which we formed here, can now come in and act as a base to deprotonate that hydrogen position allowing us to take these two electrons and place them here and also move these electrons back to nitrogen 
which is how we generate our final product. And notice that in this step, not only do we regenerate this final product with our four-membered ring, but we're also generating water, which what you were told was one of the products of this transformation as well. I'd love to hear how my mechanism compared to the one that you came up with. Additionally, I'd love to see what mechanism you could come up for this transformation. So leave it as a comment down below or create your own video either as a remix or on your own channel and let me know what you come up with. And make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you in the next video.